Hello, so today we're going to take a look at a Soviet PNV 57A night vision set. This particular version is a Polish built version PNW 57A. So, something to point out with this night vision set before we go any further. It's what you'd call a Gen Zero night vision set. It's awful at amplifying light. If you bought one of these, like a lot of people do, expecting it to be a night vision set that, you know, works like you know, your modern night visions that essentially light, am you know, amplify the visible light, even if it's very, very dim, to make it very visible uh, to you, you're going to be very disappointed. This is a Gen Zero device, so it works like World War II night vision worked, as in, you know, the infrared spotting scopes on things like the Sturmgewehr 44, I think that was called the Vampire, and the USM-3 Carbine. So how this works is basically, I've got a much more modern digital IR here. Um, not digital IR, sorry, a... Um, LED IR. Um, that's an 850 nanometer one. I've also got a 940 nanometer one that this one can see. So what you do is basically you just use it with an infrared light um, to see and the idea is that people without infrared lights can't see you. So this is very primitive. So the idea was with this, as you can see it's on a tank crewman's helmet or hat, that you'd basically have tank crewmen with these on. They could use an infrared searchlight on their tank or a spotlight basically, and they could sweep an area with that infrared light on using these goggles to see what the infrared picked up, and the idea is that people who didn't have infrared wouldn't know there was a searchlight there. Um, so night vision quickly evolved, you know, within 10 years or so of this sort of stuff coming out to actually have light amplifying night vision, you know, which is a lot more useful because it means you, this is what you'd call active night vision, where you require a active source, you know, to use it. Whereas passive night vision is the one that basically works without needing to, um, you know, give off anything to see. So, this device is strangely good, but not for the reason you would imagine. So, as I said, if you buy this device thinking it's going to be a really good night vision set, you're going to be disappointed. However, this has one of the best infrared spectrums um, that it's visible to on any of the night vision devices you'd own, even if you buy very, very expensive Gen 3 night vision, for example. So what makes this device so good is that it can see infrared ranges lots and lots of much more expensive night vision units can't see. So in theory, it would be possible to get basically an IR torch like that in a very high nanometer range um, mounted to this, and you could have it turned off, or, sorry, turned on using it as an active night vision device, and people with modern night vision still wouldn't even know you've got an active night vision device because their units can't pick up the insane ranges this thing can do. So, this is very poor amplifying visible light. It does do it a bit. Um, but, you know, its its main use was that it was basically used as an active night vision set. It basically, a Gen Zero, where it, you know, sees infrared. So it was designed for use of infrared torches, floodlights, searchlights, that sort of thing. So... Ignoring this light here, that's the only addition to it, here we have a PNV 57A. At the back you've got your transformer, so this is what steps up basically 12 to 24 volts to so about 18 kilovolts that the goggles use. At the bottom here is the bit you take off to adjust it from 12 or 24 volts, I've got it set to 12 volts. So you've got your cable at the back here, and this cable terminates in a two pin system so you can just crock clip this to a battery. Um, and this set also included, which is really useful, a lead that turns this into a car cigarette lighter adapter. But the problem is it's um, not a modern car cigarette lighter adapter, so I'm going to have to find a thing for that. I took off the eye cups for this because the eye cups have become a bit flattened and misformed over time. Uh, so I'm just using it without those. And also inside here you have infrared filters and some spare parts. Now the infrared filters are giant thick glass ones that are designed to be used with a tank's sort of, you know, searchlight. You know, like a massive, massive sort of, you know, ship's start, you know, ship sort of tank size spotlight type thing. So it's not going to work with basically a little torch, but you can use them, as I said, with modern infrared torches, which works absolutely fine. So right, I'm going to demonstrate it as best I can now to the camera. So I'll first show you what it looks like wearing it. Um, and then, I'm, although this isn't ideal because I've got it set to 12 volts, in this video I'm just going to power it with a lithium 9 volt battery. That won't get it up to its full power, but it will at least demonstrate it working. And then when I get all the right adapters, I'll run this off 12 volts and it should be pretty impressive. 
I was quite impressed with this because for a Gen Zero it does amplify light better than I thought it would. I was thinking it would actually look dimmer than using, um, you know, visible light. But it does amplify light to a degree. It can see better than the human eye in the dark. That might just be because of the increased IR range even when you're not using it in active mode. So let me show you what it looks like on, then we'll turn the lights off and I'll demonstrate it with an infrared torch as best I can on camera. So basically this is what it would look like with the device on. Uh, you've got this sort of mount here which you can use to flip the goggles up and down and what you do is you just flip them down and push them up in front of your eye like that and then when they're turned on you're obviously seeing through both of these. You can adjust the focus for each of your eyes using these back ones but you can't adjust the um, objective focus. So basically they're designed to see stuff about five yards away and that's meant to be in focus. Further away than that is blurry, closer up than that is blurry. But the idea is that, you know, you get a good sort of all-round view of them. It's a bit fish-eyed as well, which isn't very nice, but they do their job. Right, now to turn the lights off and demonstrate these. Right, I've got the light on very dim, but I'm going to literally have to do this to demonstrate these because otherwise I can't, you know, get it essentially, um, you know, where I can see what I'm doing with the battery. So these are the goggles themselves. So what I'm just going to do is connect the battery up to the unit um, as best as I can, because I said the annoying thing at the moment is that's not going to stay on. I suppose I could crop clip it on, but um, for the time being, let's just hold it in by hand. So the unit is whirring to life. And then what I can hopefully do is demonstrate to the camera what this looks like. So this might be horribly out of focus, but you can hopefully maybe see there that there is... Um, Let's just see if auto... So goes. maybe you can see the goggles there and the door behind it. These are very, very difficult to demonstrate on camera because of how fucking uh, bulky they are. But there we go. So you might be able to see from how green they look. It does show the, you know, room brighter than what I've got the light on at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to just turn an IR torch on. So you can maybe hopefully see how well these work for an IR torch. So what I'm just going to do... Let's turn the IR torch on, and then see if I can just hold this up. Actually, I'll tell you what, before it, the power completely fades and I've disconnected them, let me now wave the IR torch around, and you can hopefully see how well these pick up IR. That's just it reflecting off of a wooden door there, even as these lose power. So hopefully you can see how well these work for what they are. Um, but as I said, they're very, very primitive units. So, yeah. Don't expect much if you get a set of these. They're really, really cool. I'll just turn the light on properly now. They're really, really cool for what they are, which is um, obviously a vintage Gen Zero night vision set. But again, the problem is with these is that they don't amplify visible light to a very good extent. Um, but you can use them with an infrared light um, in search mode, basically. So what I would recommend is obviously if you get one of these, get a good IR torch and just do what I've done, put them on the top of the tank helmet there. Um, obviously, for practical reasons, modern night vision is way, way, way better um, for, you know, reasons I don't think I really need to explain to you. But if you do decide to get one of these, get a good IR torch, preferably something like 940 nanometer, because these will see 940 nanometer sign, uh, fine and a lot of... Um, you know, newer and more expensive night vision units will actually struggle to see 900 odd nanometer range IRs. So you might as well take advantage of its wide IR range on this thing. And then, you know, use them for fancy dress up kind of cool stuff like that. But they're ni nice units. If you wanted one that actually amplifies light that looks like this, get the PNV57E. That's the one with the bulkier eye bits at the front. But that's because they're light amplifying night vision goggles actually at the front as opposed to just Gen Zeros which CIR. But there you go, it's a cool unit. Um, if you got a set of these you'd probably get a lot of fun out of them. Sometimes apparently these go quite cheaply now and then. Just because of the fact that you know, with, the, with this particular set of night vision goggles, um, because they're Gen Zero there's not much demand for them other than from people that think they're cool. You know, you wouldn't really be able to practically use these for a lot of things people actually buy night vision for. Uh, you know, like, say, military, police, or sort of hunting use, because they're so obsolete in terms of technology now. But they are very cool for what they are. Um, and, you know, like I said, the coolest feature of these is how wide an IR spectrum they see.